Here I'll be doing my best to provide you an overview of the photosynthetic process as we see pictured here. A lot of times it's abbreviated capital P lowercase s. If you see that, that stands for photosynthesis. Now the basic overview is taking in plants, take in solar energy, carbon dioxide, and water to produce energy storing carbohydrates in the form typically of sugars. Oxygen is generated as a byproduct uh, and a waste product for plants, which is a good thing for us animals because we need that to breathe to go through our cellular respiration process. And the water is absorbed through the roots of the plant and is transpired through um, throughout the plant there to help move water, keep everything hydrated, high trigger pressure, and also move nutrients. Now, looking at photosynthesis on a macro and micro scale, not all cells within a plant carry out or have all the components to carry out photosynthesis. Cells in the middle layer of the leaf have the chloroplasts, which contain the photosynthetic apparatus. We see that here, the dark green region. We look towards the top, that's the cuticle, uh, and that's a waxy protective layer. This dark green section here is where the photosynthesis uh, will be occurring at the highest rate. Now within the photosynthesis, it's a very complex sequence of steps. In short though, it's conversion of light energy into chemical energy. So it takes place in two stages. We have the light dependent reaction, and then we have the Kelvin cycle or the light independent reaction. The light dependent reaction is takes place in the thylakoid membrane, uses light as the name implies, and it's generating ATP and then ADPH. Those energy molecules are going to the Kelvin cycle, which takes place physically in the plant within the stroma, uh, and it uses energy derived from these compounds uh, to make GA3P ultimately will be made into sugars from the carbon in carbon dioxide. Now the equation for photosynthesis, which you might be familiar with, uh, is carbon dioxide plus water and sunlight producing sugars and oxygen. Now it takes six carbon dioxide, six water molecules, light energy to produce one sugar or glucose molecule and six oxygen uh, molecules. Uh, it's, it's kind of deceptively kind of simple when you look at it this way, uh, but there's a very complex sequence of steps that derive this. Uh, this is, requires a lot of intermediate reactants, but this is the general summary. Glucose is the primary energy source in cells and is made from two 3-carbon GA3Ps. Now, photosynthesis is a transfer of electrons, and this is what's termed a redox reaction. Since electrons have a negative charge, when an electron is transferred, there's also a change in charge. Gaining electrons, meaning you're being reduced. Losing electrons, it's called oxidation. So if you think about gaining a negative charge, your total charge is going to become negative. It's going to be reduced. It's going to be less than what it was before. This is how it gets the tame redox reaction, reduction in oxidation. When you're transferring the electrons, something is getting reduced and something is getting oxidized. So photosynthesis transfers electrons from water to energy poor carbon dioxide molecules forming energy rich sugar molecules. So again, when you're kind of gaining those electrons, that's part of the redu reduction in charge and losing electrons is oxidizing. So we have this kind of simple way to remember this oxidative re reduction redox process. The water is oxidized, meaning it's losing electrons, and the carbon dioxide is reduced, means it's gaining electrons. Photosynthesis uses light energy to drive these electrons from water to their more energetic states of the sugar byproducts. Result is solar energy is converted to chemical energy. How we remember this is called Leo, the lion says Ger. Leo, L-E-O, losing electrons is oxidation. Gaining electrons is reduction. So Leo says Ger, uh, very commonly said, um, easy to remember to help you remember what's going on with a redox reaction. We see here reductions are gaining electrons, the carbon dioxide going to the sugar and water ultimately going to the oxygen is the oxidation that's losing electrons in that process. This all takes place, as I said, in the chloroplast. So I should probably show, should show you what a chloroplast looks like and some of the components. This is where that um, photosynthetic process is occurring. And I mentioned also the stroma, where the light uh, independent reaction, where the Kelvin cycle occurs. This is all within this membrane here, but remember there's multiple membranes. So these stacks of thylakoid called granite form a third membrane as well. So we can see an outer, an inner, and a kind of a third membrane. This is what's allowing these compartments to very precisely control where these reactions are occurring. Now chloroplasts from multiple views here, we can see that chloroplasts uh, consist of thylakoid membranes surrounded by the stroma. The thylakoid membranes contain molecules of the green pigment chlorophyll for the absorption of light. You can see in the cartoon image how they look here, kind of all stacks. This is what they look like in an actual image. Um, we can see those really dark kind of banding regions are those basically those thylakoids there stacked together to form those coronum. 
the absorbed light, most of the light is lost as heat from the leaf. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting note that those leaves are out there, but they are receiving light, which is great. They need that to be able to convert those sugars, but they're also getting a lot of heat energy. The cooling aspect of transpiration is very important for plant survival. And that transpiration is kind of like the plant sweating. You can think of it as that as, um, in that term, where those high energy molecules are being evaporated, reducing the temperature of the leaf so it doesn't burn. So we have photophosphorylation, which is generating ATP, dancing triphosphate. This is the energy used by the cells to complete its necessary function. That's the highest level, anodine triphosphate. Only having two phosphates, and then seen diphosphates, because the next lowest, the lowest energy form is uh, AMP, adenosine monophosphate. The adenosine triphosphate, ATP, is the energy currency of the cell, so it can uh, be able to complete many necessary uh, and life-supporting functions.